Today on NLPS Ed Talks, we're speaking with Dominique Sullivan. She's a teacher here in Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools. She's going to be talking to us a little bit about Google Suite for Education, a little bit of background on how she got to where she is today, a little bit about mindful education, mental health, yoga, all that good stuff. Stay tuned. This is NLPS Ed Talks, a podcast brought to you by Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools. I'm Dale Burgos, the Executive Director of Communications, and I'll be sharing conversations with students, staff, and friends of the district. We'll learn, we'll laugh, we may cry, but most importantly, we'll share the unique stories of individuals that work and play in our school system. Nanaimo Lady Smith Public Schools is one of many school districts in British Columbia, Canada, and is centrally located in one of the most beautiful places in the world, Vancouver Island. Thanks for joining us. Good day, Dominique. How are you today? So good to be here, Dale. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so happy to have you here. This is this is very exciting. I believe you're number five in our podcast. Am I list. the first teacher? Uh, but the first teacher, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so feel special. Thank you. <laughs> you. You should feel special. <laughs> Come on now. It's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. We're very excited to, to have launched or to have launched. Uh, the LPS Ed Talks uh, podcast. I think it's been fantastic. And yes, being the first educator, um, no pressure. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions and I'm not going to be grilling you because I think this is all stuff you already know, but uh, I'm excited to have you here. So thank you again. Well, there's lots of great stories in our district. There is, and I'm excited to get those. So if you know some people, throw, the, throw names right, my, you got it. my way. Okay. Uh, so let's get started. A little bit of background on yourself. So first off, full name, title that you uh, that you have right now here in the district. Sure. Uh, so my name is Dominique Sullivan. I am the teacher librarian at Quarterway School and I've been a librarian there for I want to say seven years. Um, yeah, I just love being a librarian. It's been just a journey to get there. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love it. So teaching total, a teacher librarian total seven years. Yep. Seven okay. years. Now, what about before teaching? What did you do? Well, you know, they always say that those who wander aren't lost. So uh, <laughs> I kind of took a wandering journey to get here. But I actually started out as a yoga instructor and a personal trainer. Come on. Yeah, I did. And then I was standing in front of the class and I was like, oh, man, this feels so good. Why does this feel so good? And my mom's a teacher. Okay. But I just never put two and two together that I need to be in the classroom. So I actually went back to teaching college when I was uh, 28. And I was uh, pregnant with my first and I uh, went back and as a mature student and decided awesome. to change and go go sideways. You did that yoga mm-hmm. and uh, and all that good stuff. You mentioned your mom is a teacher. Yep, Where's she was your mom? Uh, pulling hair. Okay. So I always I know I always laugh whenever <laughs> I uh, go into that school. It's like find Where's Waldo except for find Madame Sullivan. I'm on the boards. I'm on the uh, in the hallways. Yeah, and my mom was a teacher for probably 30 years in our district. Wow, so. fantastic. Yeah, but you know it's funny. Even if you're born into a teaching family, sometimes you don't know what your your life is going to bring to you. Now, are you a product of the district as well? Yep. Uh, I Well, sort of. It's funny. I always answer that, sort of. Okay. Um, I did French immersion up until grade 11, and then I did all of my French immersion courses, and I actually ended up going to Shawnigan Lake for a private school for my grade 12 year. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. so I have friends from all around the world uh, because of grade 12. I love it. I love it. And look at that. Full circle, right? Full circle. Mom must be proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, my parents are definitely very proud. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time I met you, this Mm -hmm. is going back to to when I first started here. This is about four years ago now. And uh, you invited us into your uh, classroom, the library at at, at Cole Cordaway. And uh, you talked a little bit about, I believe it was about the Google Suite for Education. Mm -hmm. Um, Back then it was named something different, Google Google Apps for Education. Now we go with with G Suite, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this was all new to me. And, mm. and well, new to the district, really. But um, you were one of the first people to mm. uh, take it on to pilot to to implement this. And I believe Cordaway was that pilot school or yep. one of the pilot schools. Mm. Let's let's go back a little bit and let's talk about what what it meant for you to to take part mm. uh, in in G Suite because this was again oh, it was something an exciting new, time. right? It was super exciting time. So uh, you know, I started using Google when I was in uh, doing my master's in teacher librarian from University of Alberta, and I just was blown away by the sharing abilities. It's really the sh- sharing and the ability to have more than one person to collaborate and I thought wow if we could only get this in our, our district and then it started opening up that it was available in our district and yeah. I applied right away to get a domain and did that <laughs> independently and then nice. uh, I was invited to join eTag and then just kept presenting about how are we using this with students and how is this powering um, empowering learners and how is it changing classrooms and the engagement was just through the roof I, I just couldn't believe it. it was just excitement all throughout so to to completely change our situation was so mind-blowing to go from one situation where um, we were struggling with Wi-Fi and we were struggling to get on top of it to now be in a place in five years ago um, now that we've got Chrome carts it's just a completely different environment for me to work in 
Oh, yeah. I just, my mind is blown. And uh, really, and so when I first met you, so you were three years into teaching then Mm -hmm. when I met you. Yep. And uh, I mean, I thought you were in a classroom because you were just so (laughs) natural and and, and pushing this G Suite with, um, you know, with all your, with all your might because this was something you were so passionate about. And so I thought you were in a classroom for years and years, right? So this was. (laughs) Tricked ya. Yeah, you you did trick me. So, so well done on that one. So let's, let's now fast forward a little Mm -hmm. bit. And you've been involved with, um, with G Suite now and it's going on, I guess just under four years, I think yeah. is what it is, yep, right? Uh, district wide, but or rather since you started and we did it an extra we year, so we're on our fifth year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So time Isn't is that flying. So crazy. Okay. So there you go. It's uh, it's going way too quick. So let's mm-hmm. little, let's talk a little bit about uh, how it's evolved mm-hmm. over the time because it has. There's there's so many pieces to it now. Mm-hmm. Extensions and so on and so forth. And mm-hmm. and now that all the schools and and almost all students are using it from K to twelve, let's t- let's talk a little bit about that. What what's the value in, well, in G Suite? Now that it's become, I would say, more of a democracy of education. And the kids, mm-hmm. what I love about it is they're showing me the buttons. Hey, did you notice that this update? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I love that com- collaborative learning that now I don't feel that I'm teaching them, that we're kind of all in the same place. And so now that we can kind of move forward together, I say, hey, did you notice this? Or like, I don't know if you noticed in the last um, upgrade, there's Google Keep. Oh, my goodness. I'm so obsessed with Google Keep. <laughs> okay. okay, well, let's hear about Google Keep. What oh, is that? Okay, Google Keep is, for me, I have to say, is the greatest um, executive functioning tool ever. Okay. It just allows me to put all of my to-do lists together, allows me to do my research, and it allows me to pull things back and forth between my research projects and so I even have a location nice. timer for example that I walk into the school and it goes boop, boop and then my <laughs> to do's to school show up because I have it set to quarter way okay so every day I walk into the building and it goes do doot and here are the things that I need to do today and then I have Too the same funny. thing at home when I go home it goes do doot and there's my to-do at home. Technology, just oh, gotta love it. I right? just think there's, if you can farm out your brain, then why are we holding these <laughs> these things in our thoughts that right. we don't need when we can farm it out? Okay, well, um, love that. And there's a lot of parents out there that mm-hmm. are, this is all new to them, right? And, and new for their kids as well. And uh, I mean, do you have, very briefly, is there, what are the benefits to using G Suite? Uh, I mean, obviously, I <laughs> How mean, How much free. time do you have? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we can go on and on, I yeah. guess. Uh, I mean, it's free mm-hmm. for, for us to use. So as a district, I mean, that's that's fantastic, oh. right? There's no cost to it. Well, I'm actually going to start from my personal self. So I'm dyslexic. And okay. so um, for me, I need tools. I would not even exist if I couldn't do a master's if G Suite or things like that didn't exist 10 years ago. I wouldn't wow. be possible. Okay. And so my brain and intelligence is there, but now showing it on paper is a whole other thing. And now with this invention of, you know, adaptions and accommodations and text to speech and those kinds of things, like get out of my way. <laughs> right, no kidding. Right, and now my brain can actually show you exactly how smart I am without being tripped up with some of the tech stuff. And that's why I love it so much. And that's why I've been pushing it so much because it's the great equalizer. Nice. Every kid can feel that, you know, we, we'd always talk about what are your strengths and we're going to accommodate for those that aren't there, those pieces that aren't there. I love it. There there are a ton of benefits. And yes, we could talk forever and ever on forever. it. Forever. Uh, but uh, trust me, and I, I mean, trust Dominique, obviously. I mean, Google Suite is is, is a fantastic yeah. thing. So there you go. It's just made those kids' eyes glide up and the engagement's just, it makes work way more fun. I love it. Yeah. There you go. Okay, well, let's move on a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, oh, well, rather, let's go back a little bit here. Uh, NLPS Ed Talks. I like to talk to uh, to staff. We we like to to learn things about mm-hmm. uh, education, but we also want to talk a little bit about the people that make up mm. the school district. And of course, you are one of the many many teachers that we have mm-hmm. out there, one of the many educators, and um, and hopefully, uh, we will have many many more uh, as long as people keep listening. So subscribe, but uh, keep listening, and of course, we'll get more and more. Now, let's talk a little bit about you, mm-hmm. okay? And I'd like to know a little bit about what you like to do uh, in school, but then also. Also, a little bit of uh, the work that you do outside of school. So you mentioned uh, that you that you used to do yoga, or, or not te- used to? No, no, still do. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm starting. I'm I'm, st- I'm, I'm trying to take it up right now because I, I hear there's so many benefits. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about mental health, mm-hmm. and and this one's a big one for you because I think this is. Uh, well, I, I won't even say it. Let's just get right into it. Sure. Tell me about it. Um, so when I was in my early 20s, I, of course, developed some anxiety stuff that goes around. You know, a lot of 20-year-olds uh, are developing that. And when I was at uh, university, I definitely felt anxiety. And so to try to combat that, I started doing yoga. And uh, that was in 2002, I started doing yoga. Nice. And uh, I loved it so much. It just felt like home. 
And so I realized I need to teach this. And then that's how I got into teaching, teaching. But um, what I was finding is that it just gave me such a, a breath and, and ability to take on more my stress cup. I was able to drop some of my stress in my stress cup. Okay. And so I just found it was such a gift to give others. And what was interesting is I'd go to a party and I'd say, hey, I teach yoga. And people would say, oh, and they'd lean back. Oh, no. <laughs> but this is in 2003, right? Okay. And, uh, and today, what I find really funny is when I tell people I, te I teach yoga, and I've been teaching it for more than 15, you know, 16, 17 years, nice. and now they're all leaning in. Where do, oh. you, where do you teach? What do you do? What style do you do? What do you meditate? Do you do teens? Will you take my child? <laughs> you know, there's a, a string of questions now, and I just think, isn't that fascinating? But in right. my life, you know, in my very, I'm only 40, and in my lifetime, I've seen the, you, you're weird, to, oh, I'm fascinated. Right. And I just think it's the research. It's coming out, and it's very clear that it is one of the best anti-depression things that we can do for our bodies and our brains and our health. And yes, it's a big exactly. Deal. Now, um, other than yoga, of course, mental mm -hmm. health, again, there's there's other pieces that yes. you do for students, and, and I, I'd like to know more. Let's 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 share a little bit more sure. about that. Um, so what I've been noticing, I mean, the research is clear, and this is a study out of the States, it's saying that anxiety is developing at a rate that we've never seen before. I'm seeing kids in class struggling. I mean, I witness a panic attack at least once a week. And this is, you know, kids wow. are coming to the library for support and just a safe place. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2012, they did a study, and uh, from 2012 to 2015, there was a 50% increase for girls. Wow. And now the anxiety rate for teens is at 32%. For adults, it's about 15 to 13%, okay. and so something's going on. And so I just tried to be really proactive and I knew it had to do with meditation because, you know, I knew that I feel better when I meditate and I've been following um, a specific type of lineage of meditation and it's called uh, self-compassion or sometimes called loving kindness. Right. And this, so when we talk about uh, meditation, it's kind of like the word sports. Like, what do you do? Do you play basketball? Do you play volleyball? Oh, okay. Right? So meditation's the same. Yeah. So you have to figure out what lineage do you do. Okay. And a lot of people are into mindfulness or breath meditation. You know, those are kind of the standard ones. Um, but I've just been following a, a person called uh, Kristen Neff and Chris Germer. And their research has been coming out that it is really self-compassion that heals. Okay. So mindfulness affects stress and self-compassion lets us get over our trauma and our difficulty and allows us to handle things with grace and resiliency. Okay, um, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, self-compassion. Sure. What is that? What does that mean? Sure. So um, self-compassion has three different parts. The first part is you need to be, do you treat yourself like a friend? Okay. So, you know, the example I always give children is, um, so when you go home and your bed's not made, do you say, oh my goodness, I'm such a lazy, I can't believe I didn't do it, my bed's just a disaster, or you can beat yourself up. Or you can approach yourself and say, you know what, I'm going to give myself a gift by making my own bed. And okay. there are actually equally, um, they found that self-compassion is more motivating for children than really? criticism. Okay. So when we speak to ourselves with kindness and compassion, yes. we actually heal. We are more motivated. We are happier. We are less depressed. And we're more resilient. We're connected more to others. <laughs> I love it. I know. That's fantastic. And you can use that in the classroom, oh. obviously, right, when you're, when you're working with it's the kids. It's incredible. And, Honestly, I teach yeah. these skills to children who are 9, 10, 11. Wow. It, and they blow my mind. They actually think get it better than adults. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I, I, you hear that, right? The youth <laughs> they're is, closer to the source. Th that's it, right? And, and their mind is, is, is a sponge at that point, and they're yeah. just taking it all in. Yeah. Um, I want to go back a little bit here because mm -hmm. you mentioned some stats, and uh, those numbers, um, yeah. they're, they're quite high. They're terrible. And so, I mean, you, you talk about anxiety. Is, in these studies, did, did they say why? Why these days? Is it, is it social media? Like, is it, is it just what is it that, that's causing the anxiety? Yeah, I think, you know, they're, they're at the stage in the research where they're looking at causation rather than cause. They haven't quite correlated right down to cause, but they're they're guessing that it actually has to do with our social media and our phones. It is, okay. So if children get phones too early, then mm. their ability to center themselves in the world is sometimes um, a different. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, I just threw that out there because really I'm just thinking what <laughs> was is. big in the last few years. Yeah, it's a change. Uh, and you do, I mean, anywhere you go, 
mm-hmm. right? And you see people on their phone, mm-hmm. whether they're in, they're in a waiting room and at, at their doctor's office or, or somewhere else, mm-hmm. and they're looking down, yeah. right? And it's it's more and more you see younger kids more and more with with the devices. Do you know right? what uh, the default mode neck word is? Have you heard that term before? No, never. Okay. So that's why. Okay, so basically, what the default mode network is our brain's ability to scan the environment from the amygdala, which is our um, our reptilian brain. It's our where we kind of uh, as cavemen. So basically, if we're scanning the environment, we're looking for a saber-toothed tiger. Okay. And our brain is constantly scanning, 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 scanning. And it doesn't recognize the difference between somebody who's given us a bad look or homework that's due. So our brain doesn't understand the difference between virtual stress or paper stress and a saber-toothed tiger stress. It just sees stress. Okay. So our brains scan all day long. And basically what they did is they did this one study where they gave people an app and they said, what are you doing throughout the day? And what they realized is that 47% of your day is spent in the default mode network daydreaming in La La Land, in rumination, in thinking about what happened yesterday and thinking forward, not being in the present moment. So if you take a second to think, okay, if I'm 40, that means 20 years of my life has been spent ruminating (laughs) (laughs) Right. <laughs> about what somebody said to me or that email that had a wet, weird tone. Right. Okay. So when work, our kids are not bored, mm-hmm. they don't practice boredom. Oh. So their default mode network, their scanning ability is hyper because they're not, they can't tolerate boredom anymore. We fill that space now. And so their default mode network, when they look up from their screens, is just seeing stress all the time. Oh, my goodness. So they can't understand wow. the difference. And that's where mindfulness is so important, is it, bre- it brings the prefrontal cortex back online that right. controls the amygdala. Right. And I'm hearing that wor- word more and more, yeah. um, the practice of mindfulness. And, yeah. and I do that myself. Uh, it helps me to calm my brain and, and to... And Most just... people teach it wrong, though. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's get right into it then. I want to know. Tell well, me how to do it. And even this was in my yoga training. Okay. So this is where I, I, it took me many years. I only discovered mindfulness, the, like the actual goal of mindfulness right. in the last five years. And I've been a yogi for 15, 17 years. Okay. So the goal of mindfulness is to not have a clear brain. Really? Yeah, that's not... So then I'm just relaxing. (laughs) I'm just breathing. Well, you know, even meditators who've been at it for many, many years, they can't calm their minds. Okay. So that's not the goal. Okay. The goal is to notice when your mind is wandering. Okay. And then the whole game is to notice and return. And that's the brain curl. That's the brain push up. Okay, when you say return, so yeah. explain so that a little I bit So when I say more. return, I usually say anchor to the breath, right? Okay. So basically you're, um, all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, I've been thinking about this vacuum that's been broken in my house for the last 20 minutes. Like I haven't paid attention that it's sunny outside. Right. So that's the first thing. I notice, ah, right? Okay, yeah. So there's an acronym called RAIN, right? I recognize that I'm not there. Okay. So, and then the second one is I'm going to allow whatever feelings are there. I'm going to investigate what is this emotion, so I need to name it to tame it. Okay. And then the last one for rain is nurture. What do I need right now? Okay. So then what you're saying is (laughs) what I was thinking mindfulness was is incorrect. Well, it's often taught incorrectly. Yes, exactly. And maybe that's... um, uh, you're right. It was probably taught incorrectly, but what I do seems to work for me. Mm-hmm. So whatever that would be called, I'm not sure. But um, if you're chilling and you've got nothing going on, yeah, you're good. And okay. then you're gonna notice when something pops up. Yes, I need to make that phone call. I should have emailed that person, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. <laughs> Fill insert craziness. <laughs> right. And then right. you're gonna notice, and it's the return. And that's when we do a brain push up, and that's that neurons, um, you know, axons and dendrites, and we're trying to have neuroplasticity. And so that's what makes the neuroplasticity is the return. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. I'm learning something new all the time. This is why we do this podcast, people. I love it. Okay, uh, Brain now, science always is exciting. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, what about a little bit about, um, uh, you touched on a little bit, I believe, self-regulation, mm. right? So let's talk a little bit about that and how that it really benefits yeah. uh, us in the district or students or, or just us in general, right? So that sense of self-regulation, children will come, and I'm seeing a huge difference in kindergarten every year they're less regulated. Every year they're coming in with more behavior and they need friendship coaches and that that kind of thing. So self-regulation really to me is an overarching 
ability to regulate your feelings and not only not to regulate them, but to know what you're feeling when you're feeling it. Okay. So a kid may be losing it. Why are you losing it? I have no idea. Right. So self-regulation is to be able to, is part of mindfulness is being able to name it, to tame it. Okay. So what are you feeling? I'm feeling mad. Perfect. Right. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that language, the language of the inner self. Let's, let's go back a little bit sure. here, okay? Uh, we, these were all, uh, I'll say, fun facts, or facts, rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always like to throw some fun facts of, uh, for the people that we have on the show here. And um, you, this, this past mm-hmm. summer, uh, something new came into your life. And let's, mm-hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I got hired by the uh, Dalai Lama Center as a facilitator, which is really exciting. Um, so what I think is so exciting about this time, you know, I think there's a season for everything. I, there was a season for me for Google. I'm really excited to participate in that. And I definitely feel that there's a season for mental health and that's kind of going to be my new jam for my 40s I think (laughs) okay um so the Dalai Lama Center uh, allows it's it's all about self-regulation it's really the how do we help kids make friends how do we get them to solve peaceful problems it's really about every piece about the whole child and it fits so beautifully in the First Nations content of looking at the child as uh, holistic and um so now I'm able to go to different staffs or, or caregivers and help teachers and caregivers and parents help their children self-regulate. I love it. Yeah. And this is such a good fit for you. It just seems that everything that you've done oh. in your life up until now just just tied it all in a nice little little package. Well, I for just you, feel right? like this has been made for me because <laughs> on one side I've been an educator forever and then right? on the other side I've been a yogi. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a space in the middle for me. <laughs> I love it. And I just can't believe it. I just get super excited. I'm super excited for you. Yeah. Congratulations. I think that's fantastic. Well, when you watch kids like truly suffer and then mm-hmm. when they get it, when they get what they need, when they figure out how to get their own back or how to calm themselves down, there's nothing more exciting. Watching that sparkle in their eye, there's right. nothing more exciting. I love tech, but I love self-regulation <laughs> more <laughs> because it speaks to the heart. Yes. You know, I can teach you right. all this stuff with apps and, you know, we can do all sorts of crazy things and green screens and that kind of stuff. But if you're fundamentally not happy, who cares? Right. It, to me, it's, you know, you can speak five languages, you can do algebraic math. Okay. But if you can't be happy, if you can't connect to others, if you can't find peace within yourself, that stuff is just fringe. It's just like icing on a cake. I'm going to put that can you, I'm going to put that on my wall <laughs> right now. I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm going to quote you on that one. I love it. Do you want to know how the cutest thing ever so I do okay, this little um this brain camp. I only do it for 20 minutes with the kids once a week. Okay. And it's because anxiety is so intense. So I basically the kids come with their lunches, they come and hang out with me on Thursday. I just do 20 minutes and I just do the, like something mental health. Right. Whatever. And these kids are writing posters and mantras all over the school. Awesome. And I'm like you are nine <laughs> and you know rain and you, you're nine and right. 10 and can do these things. Like I sometimes get jealous of my students oh, because can you imagine if we raised a world where these kids could just know, imagine, yeah, right? just know themselves and to be confident in that and, and to resolve their own problems. Like it's, it's just cool. You're doing something pretty cool over there. Oh, yeah, I right? like it. We need, we, we need you everywhere, <laughs> Dominique. Uh, there's a course that you teach. I do. Correct? Yes. I Tell do. me about that one. So, um, again, this was part of watching kids have panic attacks and really struggling with it. Okay. You know, I wanted to do something proactive. Um, so I took some discretionary time last June and I flew to Winnipeg and I took a week off. Nice. And uh, hometown, by the way. Oh, I didn't know you were from Winnipeg. Born and raised, yeah. Oh, hilarious. So um, I went and uh, there was people from all around the world. There was people from Singapore, from Texas. There was people from all around the world. Um, and so the course that I took as an adult, which is called Mindful Self-Compassion, which helped helped me huge with caregiver burnout and stress and stress mm-hmm. management because, you know, as a teacher here and nurses and that kind of thing, you get caregiver burnout pretty easily. Okay. So I took the course, changed my world, and then I went and I trained myself on how to teach it to teens because I really wanted to make a difference for teens. And so I teach an eight-week course um, up at Bethlehem Retreat Center at night, not okay. during the school day. <laughs> uh, not during the school day. And Good then, to know. Yeah, exactly. I am still working the whole time at work. <laughs> and, um, and I just hang out with these teens and every week we do a different topic. So sometimes we'll talk about handling difficult emotions or we'll talk about anger or we'll talk about mindfulness. And it is, I'm almost finished my first session and it's just, I just like love hanging out with these teens. They say the coolest things. <laughs> they send me pictures. They, I just, it. yeah. 
get to hang out with my little crew of mindfulness and I love it. There yeah. you go. And you've got, um, well, I mean, if people want to find some more information, you've got a, a website, I right? Do. Tell me about that one. People always laugh when I say what it is. So I <laughs> <laughs> I call myself the Zen librarian because obviously I'm a teacher librarian. Gotcha. And uh, yeah. exactly. I've been a yogi for many, many years. And so I teach yoga outside um, Piper's Lagoon from June to September. Oh. Just because I'd like to. Apparently, I don't work enough. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course, yeah. And Well, I've, I've taught yoga all throughout my career. I just love hanging out with my uh, community. And then um, and then I, I teach um, different things. Like, I'm going to be doing uh, wellness for families this summer, be different retreats and right. up at Bethlehem. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see where the world will take me. We'll but, see where it goes. Uh, That's right. And if they're interested, they can follow yep. you on social media. Yep. I'm on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. I've got my own website, and it's all under the zenlibrarian.ca. I love it. Love having you here. Thanks Aww, so much for thanks, coming. Just, Time flies by, doesn't it? <laughs> it always does. Thank yeah, you again. Fantastic. We'll have you back again, I promise. <laughs> uh, we'll have more to talk about, but uh, thanks again for coming down. I appreciate that. Uh, this has been an episode of NLPS Ed Talks. Thanks for coming. Have a good day. Thank you.